हेलो गाइस आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग गुड आई एम विशाली की कान एंड वी आर डिस्कसिंग द वी टेक्नोलॉजी इन दैट वी आर डिस्कसिंग डिफ्यूजन टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द फिक्स वन डायमेंशनल डिफ्यूजन इक्वेशन फिक्स फर्स्ट लॉ फिक्स सेकंड लॉ द लिमिटेशन एंड एडवांटेजेस ऑफ द फिक्स लॉज एज वेल सो दिस वीडियो इज गोइंग टू बी रियली इंटरेस्टिंग वन एंड वॉच दिस वीडियो विद अटमोस्ट अटेंशन सो दैट यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड ईच एंड एवरी but before proceeding to watch this video it is highly recommended that you go and watch the previous two videos where i already discussed about the introduction to the diffusion as well as the nature of diffusion and after that i discussed about the various process steps in the diffusion okay so i hope you have seen those videos now you don't have any doubt in the basic steps or the basic terminology if any doubt go there and watch them first so now objectives of this video is the introduction to the fixed laws okay after that we are going to see the diffusion due to the concentration gradient we are going to see the rate of diffusion now we are going to see how the rate of the diffusion can be found out with the help of fixed first law and the fixed second law okay we are going to see its detailed analysis as well and at last we are going to see the limitations of the fixed laws okay now coming to the diffusion i have already talked about the diffusion in solid liquid and gases we know that the solid atoms are bonded with a very strong bond to their particular location there will be less atomic vibration in the case of solid the atomic vibrations in the case of liquid will be more than the solid but it will be lesser than the gases so in the case of gases we will be having most of the random motion of the atoms okay so this is the representation of the gas atoms and liquid atoms and the solid atoms you can see here okay so now you can see in which case we will be having the highest rate of the diffusion the rate of the diffusion will be highest in the case of gases okay so in the case of gases the diffusant atoms can reach up to a longer distance and with a very fast speed as compared to the solids so now coming to the doping process i have already described this process let's have this quick review okay so now we are having the doping of phosphorus on the silicon to form the n type of semiconductor what we can do the first step is to deposit the phosphorus rich layer on the surface of the silicon this is the pre deposition step after that we are uh, moving towards the drive in step in which we have the deposition layer of phosphorus on the surface of the silicon and we are heating it so as a result we are forming the doped semiconductor region okay so this phosphorus in, which is present on the surface of the silicon can move inside the silicon uh, wafer in the drive in process when we are supplying the high temperature to this process okay so this is the basic diffusion process now coming to a quantity which is called flux okay so the flux is the change of the mass or the atoms per unit time per unit area okay so if i have some atoms which are moving from this position to this position so how many atoms are moving from this position to this position per unit time per unit area is my flux okay it tells me how fast the diffusion is happening okay it can be measured in the kg per meter square second okay or if i have the mass calculated in the form of atoms i can have the uh, flux unit as atoms per meter square second okay so now as i know the atoms or molecules are moving in the particular direction so the flux is a directional quantity It tells me in which direction the atoms or the molecules or the mass is moving so it is a directional quantity so you can see uh, this is the x direction it shows me the direction of the movement of this gray atom or it is showing me the direction of the flux we have taken the unit area through which we have observed the atoms so now the random motion leads to the net mass flux whenever we have the net flow of mass which means we have net mass flux present there when the concentration is not uniform whenever we have the uniform concentration then there will be zero flux there will be zero net mass flow 
okay so remember that whenever we have flux which means we always have some concentration gradient so equalizing concentration is a consequence it is not the cause of diffusion okay so whenever we have diffusion at the end we are equalizing the concentration so the flux has units as mass or moles or volume or per unit uh, distance per unit time okay so now we can calculate the diffusion coefficient which is having the unit of distance square per unit time okay so we are going to calculate how we can find out this diffusion coefficient unit so i am going to show you in the upcoming slide that how we are finding this unit so as of now you must understand its diffusion coefficients unit is distance square per unit time okay so you can see it here this is my uh, equation so the fixed first law is represented with the help of this equation j is the flux okay so the flux has the unit we already know this d is the diffusion coefficient okay this diffusion coefficient is also having this unit so the flux is directly proportional to the concentration gradient okay so del c by del x is directly proportional j is directly proportional to del c by del x okay so if i remove the proportional sign i will be having negative of di why we have the negative sign okay so think about it i am going to tell you in a while why we have this negative sign uh, before d here okay so now the flux is represented as the change in the concentration gradient so did you find out that why we have this negative sign so the concentration uh, change is from higher concentration to the lower concentration the flux direction is also in the reverse direction from higher to the lower concentration and this is the reason we have the negative sign over here okay so i i think you don't have any doubt j is the rate of transfer of solute per unit area per unit time okay so or it is called the diffusion flux c is the concentration of the solute okay so which uh, we have already uh, found out which we should know to find out j x is the coordinate axis in the direction of solute flow t is the diffusion time d is the diffusion coefficient or diffusion constant or it is also called the diffusivity it is a constant okay we can find out the uh, units of this diffusion coefficient as well so now if i see the statement for the fixed law according to the statement the local rate of transfer of solute per unit area per unit time is proportional to the concentration gradient of the solute and it defines the proportionality constant as diffusivity this is the proportionality constant which is the diffusivity of the solute the negative sign shows the flow towards the lower concentration of the solute i hope now you don't have any doubt so according to this law j is directly proportional to dc by dx if i remove this proportional sign i will be having j to be equal to minus d dc by dx okay so this is the flow direction this is the one unit square area okay so now here i can represent uh, j as 1 upon a dn by dt this was the basic definition of j j was the number of mass transferred per unit time per unit area now j is also equal to minus d dc by dx so 1 upon a dn by dt is equal to minus d dc by dx so from here i can find out the number of uh, the rate of transfer of mass or rate of transfer of atoms so dn by dt will be equal to i can take this a this side minus da dc by dx okay so now here j is represented as mass per unit area per unit time or it has the uh, unit as atoms per meter square second now diffusivity is again a material property it depends upon the material it is a function of the composition of material also it depends upon the temperature as i have already discussed in the previous video today also i am going to tell you how the diffusivity is dependent upon the temperature mathematically so whenever we have the cubic symmetry in the crystal the diffusivity is isotropic which means we have the diffusion in the all of the direction equally even if the steady state conditions do not exist which means the concentration gradient is not fixed the higher concentration and the lower concentration are not fixed they are changing with time 
then also this fixed first law is valid okay so even if steady state condition do not exist that is concentration at a point is changing with time or i can say there is accumulation or depletion of matter then also fixed first law is still valid but it is not easy to use in that scenario okay so now coming to the unit of directivity or the diffusion coefficient okay we know j is equal to minus d dz by dx okay we know the units of j j is number upon meter square second these unit we have to find out okay so now dc dc is having the unit uh, number per meter cube and this dx is having the unit meter so here we will be uh, representing the uh, units of d as meter square per second okay so i hope now you understood how i have found out the units of d it is very simple to find out by using all of the units of j dc and dx okay so dc's unit was uh, number per unit uh, meter cube which means the mass per unit volume you should not get confused here okay so now coming to the limitations of fixed first law there are some limitations so we are moving towards the fixed second law it de describes the diffusion process accurately it tells me the direction of the mass flow it tells me what is the diffusion constant but there are some limitation like there is no convenient measure of the current density of the impurity okay how much the impurity is moving as a current okay so i don't know the current density of the impurity so second law developed to describe the concept with more readily measurable quantities okay so from here i can measure the current density as well so second law is a better law than the fixed first law okay so according to the fixed uh, second law we have del c by del t is equal to del by del x of d del c by del x okay so if d is uh, not a function of position i can pull it outside and i can represent del c by del t as d into del square c by del del x square which is a second order differential equation so the equation is a second order pde okay so uh, partial differential equation i need to solve it with the help of initial condition and also the boundary condition so i require both of them so i will be uh, using the initial condition like i have the constant source or i have the limited source in the case of constant source we have the source which we are supplying in a constant manner okay so if i want to dope the phosphorus so i am supplying the phosphorus constantly the uh, amount of phosphorus is not reducing with time okay in the case of limited distribution what we are doing we are supplying the phosphorus at the initial level then we are stopping its supply okay then this diffusion process is going on and then we are seeing the boundary condition the initial conditions okay so now according to the fixed second law uh, how we can uh, measure all of the parameters so you can see the concentration with respect to the distance from the wafer so this slope is related to the flux so if i want to find out flux i can use this slope so now if i represent the flux this is like this okay so if i have the 1d diffusion problem the diffusion is occurring in one dimensional direction only let us consider a small element of width delta x in the body so this is the small uh, width delta x x2 minus x1 over here in which we have the concentration difference okay so here we have the higher concentration here you can see we have the lower concentration let the volume of the element uh, that we have to be uh, delta x which is 1 to be thickness and one to be height and delta x to be the width that we have here let the concentration profile of species s as shown in the figure you can see the concentration profile over here the slope of the cx curve is related to the flux via the fixed second law and in the figure the flux is decreasing linearly as the concentration is decreasing the flux is also decreasing the flux entering the element is jx here you can see uh, this is the flux over here 
and here this is the flux that, that is jx plus delta x that is the flux that is leaving since the flux x1 is not equal to flux leaving x2 that is the flux at x2 jx1 is always greater than jx2 there is an accumulation of species into the delta x region so here i can say there will be some accumulation of the dopant particles the increase in the matter species in the control volume is represented as del c by del t into v is equal to del c by del t into delta x and this is the fixed second law Okay, so now I can see the uh, conditions, we can have the steady state and we can have the non-steady state. Okay, so in the steady state, we can have the diffusion constant, which is not a function of the concentration. And in the another case, we can have the diffusion constant or diffusivity as a function of the concentration. In the non-steady state also, we have the two uh, parameters like the diffusivity is not a function of concentration, diffusivity is a function of concentration. So in the case of non-steady state, we have the flux which is a function of x as well as time. In the steady state, we have the flux which is not a function of x as well as time. So, in the steady state, the flux is same if I, even if I change x or even if I change the time. But in the non-steady state, the flux will be different if I change x or change the time. So, now diffusion can occur under steady state or the non-steady state conditions. Steady state conditions, the flux is not a function of position within the material or the time that I have already told you under non-steady state condition, this is not true. So, this implies that under uh, steady state, the concentration profile does not change with time. But in the non-steady state, reverse will happen. So, in each of these circumstances, diffusivity may or may not be a function of concentration. The term concentration can also be replaced with the composition. So, you can see under the steady state condition, I said the flux is not a function of time. So, I can say del j by del x to be 0, which is uh, the negative of which is equal to del c by del t. So, I can say del of minus del of del x minus d del c by del x is equal to 0. I can pull this d outside and I can say d del square c by del x square is equal to 0. This is the equation under steady state condition. Under non-steady state condition we have this flux to be a function of x as well as t so i can say del c by del t or i can say del by del x of d del c by del x is not a function of position and now i can represent the concentration as cx comma t as a minus b error function x upon 2 under root dt so now this is the analytical solution of the fixed law Cx comma t is equal to m under root pi dt exponential minus x square upon 4 dt. So, this is my analytic solution when I have considered all the initial condition and all of the boundary condition. So, I can represent it as Cxt minus Cs upon C0 minus Cs is equal to error function of x upon 2 under root dt. So now, as I have already told you, we have two models, constant source and the limited source. In the constant source, we have the source that is uh, cons consistent, consistent over the substrate. So its uh, amount is not reducing. We are constantly supplying the source. If it is consumed, that much source we are supplying to it. So concentration at x is equal to zero will be n naught. Okay, so n zero comma t is equal to n naught but at n infinity comma t will be 0 and x comma 0 is equal to 0. So, these are all of the condition initial condition and the boundary condition. So, I will be using it to find out n x comma t which will be used uh, giving me the output to be n naught error function of x upon 2 under root dt. So, you can see it here how I have the output to be in the terms of error function. So, you have to just remember this output you have to see that output is a function of complementary error function.
ओके सो नाउ द टोटल डोज क्यू विल बी रिप्रेजेंटेड एज द इंटीग्रेशन ऑफ एन एक्स टी डी एक्स विच इज इक्वल टू टू एंड नॉट अंडर अंडर रूट डी टी बाई पाए इन द केस ऑफ लिमिटेड सोर्स वी हैव डोज टू बी कॉन्स्टेंट सो हेयर वी आर सप्लाइंग सम इनिशियल डोज दैट इज सी दैट इज कॉन्स्टेंट वी डोंट नीड टू फाइंड आउट द क्यू हेयर ओके सो we are uh, approximating it with the help of delta function so here uh, the condition initial condition are de del n by del x at x is equal to 0 comma t is equal to 0 for from that i can find out the initial dose also q i can find out so 0 to infinity and x comma t dx is equal to q that is my initial condition okay this is my boundary condition and infinity comma t is equal to 0 and x comma 0 is equal to 0 so the output is this is the output so you can see the output is the exponential function and x comma t is q upon under root pi dt e raised to power minus x square upon 4 dt so this is the exponential function over here this is the complementary error function this is how the constant source distribution and the limited source distribution will be different so now what is it it is the amount of the dopant that is going inside this is the uh, process or the path followed by the dopant this is how the dopant is moving inside the substrate so these models are telling me that now coming to the temperature dependency of the diffusivity i have already told you the diffusivity depends upon the temperature so d is equal to d not e raised to power minus q upon kt that we already know diffusion is an activated process and hence diffusivity depends exponentially on the temperature q is the activation energy for diffusion now q depends on the kind of atomic process involved in the diffusion so okay so diffusivity depends upon the activation energy as well as the temperature this dependence has important consequences with regard to the material behavior at the elevated temperature so i need to understand what are the consequences at the elevated temperature for that i need to understand what is the relation of diffusivity with temperature at the elevated temperature like the process uh, processes like precipitation coarsening oxidation creep also will be occurring at a very high rate at the elevated temperature so i need to control the temperature so these are the references these are very amazing book if you have any doubt you can refer these books okay or you want to uh, analyze this topic in detail these are the best books so i hope you like this session if you like it please push the like button subscribe to the channel and also do share it with your friends if you want to discuss any query with me use the comment box thank you so much